So what we're going to talk about today is talk about how you teach an IED to a person, not only regards to how to identify it visually, but also how to identify it in something like an x-ray machine or even a walking metal detector. So when you look historically at training on IEDs, and go back, you know, a very long time ago, one of the acronyms that they always used to try to explain to somebody uh, what an IED was, was PIES, P-I-E-S. And PIES stand for Power, uh, Initiator, Explosive, and Switch. And that was kind of the norm if you ever went to an IED class where they try to teach you the different components of an IED. So back then, they didn't have the technology that they have today, and they weren't looking for IEDs with this technology like we are today. And also, we didn't have things like the uh, automatic explosive detection and a lot of the other things that we have now that help us or assist us in trying to locate an IED with our different screening systems. So when you start looking at PIES and base it on how a person actually learns or remembers um, so they can actually go and apply that information to a system like an extra machine, PIES is an extremely poor acronym to try to use to teach somebody how to find an IED. And I'm going to show you why, okay? So when you start thinking about IEDs and you look at it from the PIES perspective, this right here breaks down IEDs in two different formulas. One is the uh, old version, which is PIES. Here is your power, initiator, explosive, and switch, okay? So if you think about an IED based on how you would look for it in an x-ray machine, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the process that we teach them or how an IED would actually be presented to them. So when you start looking at it from the perspective of, I have an automatic detection reg box, how do they use that and what are they, their alarm resolution procedures based on that and how does PIES work for that? The answer is it doesn't work. And we're going to explain that more as we get down into the bottom part, which are the five components of an improvised explosive device. And this time it's going to be battery, wire, switch, which could be a multitude of things, detonator and explosive. So the five components of an IED break down that IED based on its method of construction. From either um, going forward or backward, this is how the IED is going to be configured when it's actually uh, put together and presented to somebody. PIES is absolutely not uh, the, how an IED would be configured or presented to somebody in something like an x-ray machine. And the other thing that's wrong with this is the terminology that they're using doesn't make sense to people today. Okay, so if I show somebody this and say, what is this? Okay, what is this right here? They're not going to say power source. Nobody's going to say power source. A bomb guy might say power source, but every uh, uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry out there, when they see this, they're going to say battery. They might even go so far to say 9-volt battery. So what you should teach people when you're teaching them how to visually recognize something so when you put a PowerPoint slide up and you show a battery, the first thing that comes into that person's head is not power source. It never has been and it never will be. And that's another reason why PIES is so ineffective. You need to teach them battery. You need to teach them what batteries look like, um, you know, whether it's the common type batteries that we see today or the types of batteries that we see in cell phones. People don't call the battery in their cell phone a freaking power source. They call it a fucking battery. So you need to start using that terminology when you start explaining to a brand new student and you're trying to teach them what they're trying to look for when it comes to an IED. Get away from power source. It makes no sense to them and it's confusing. Stick with battery. Now the next thing they have is the detonator. So right now if I hook the detonator up to the power source, it goes off. That doesn't work. So again, PIES, based on how an IED is built and constructed, does not match how it's going to be presented to them. The next one they have is the uh, uh, explosive, um, power, initiator, explosive, and then switch. Now this one, initiator, we don't call them initiators. I'm a bomb tech. You can go on Dino Nobel's website, um, Orica's website, any company that manufactures explosives, and you're not going to find the freaking term initiator. Okay? It's either going to be called a detonator or a blasting cap. Initiators, if you want to get down to it from a technical perspective based on bomb techs, an initiator is something that is used to initiate a low explosive to start that slow burning process, which we call deflagration. Okay, So an initiator is not, doesn't make sense based on what is really out there, the references that are applied. Patents don't call them initiators, they call them detonators, and they call them blasting caps. 
So get away from the initiator because it doesn't make sense and it doesn't apply to what it's actually really called in the real world. Now the explosive, that one's okay. I mean, you got explosive is explosive. You do get into uh, variations of them based on inorganic and organic explosives and how they respond to the x-ray systems. Your organic explosives are going to turn orange. Your inorganic explosives are going to turn green or a dark orange depending on the mixture with the inorganic material. And the last one they got is switch. Again, the construction of an IED does not match. Uh, when you start looking at the switch portion of an IED, that's probably by far the most complex and hardest thing to teach. So what we're going to teach you to do is go to what we call the five components of an IED. Battery, wire, switch, detonator, explosive. And if you do it backwards or forwards, that's exactly how an IED is actually constructed. Okay? So you've got your batteries, you've got your wires. If you see wires, they are duplex wire systems in IEDs. The wires in an IED do not look nothing like your cell phone charger or the power cord to your laptop. They are very different. It's a duplex wire system, two wires, and those wires will stick out much different than how you see normal power cords or, or um, USB cables inside of a person's bag. They're significantly different, and you need to start teaching that. And when you get to the switch part of it, that's where it gets really complicated. And depending on who that, who that student is, like bomb techs, they get knee deep into this and they can name every single one of these switches that are typically used in IEDs. That's a, that's a challenge for a new x-ray screener to get them to the point where they can uh, be able to recognize these. And the other problem you're going to run into when you get that detailed with it are these systems do not have the resolution or the line pairs per millimeter to be able to show a lot of these very small components in a shape that they can recognize. And what happens is they'll pixelate out very badly on these systems because they have very crappy line pairs per millimeter when you compare that to a bomb tech system. So if you want a new improved technology, start asking these vendors to give you an improved uh, detector boards with higher resolution and higher line pairs per millimeter. And um, that would definitely improve their ability to be able to identify these smaller IED components, especially in an x-ray system. And then we'll show that to you. Then after the switch, which could be multiple switches, you need a teachable IED can have more than one switch, you would have the detonator and then you'd have the explosive. The detonator to set off the explosives has to be inserted into the explosives. So if you see the red box, the teaching that we've always used, if you see a red box, look for the detonator inside of the box, not the initiator. The detonator inside is something that looks like a detonator and that's what's cluing them in that they potentially have an IED. So from backwards to forwards, the five components of an IED is a much better method to train your students in regards to what an IED and how it responds to x-ray. So let's run this through the x-ray machine and take a look at how this stuff looks like. Uh, and we'll go over each of the items as it passes through. Now again, this is a Smith's Detection 6046 SI system. Um, we've got the automatic detection turned on and as you can see, both of the explosive simulants actually automatically detected. And in this scenario, we see in the red box, we look inside the red box, and we definitely have something that looks like a detonator. It's got the shape, the aluminum shape, the two wires going into it. It's got the dark black mass of lead azide, lead stephanate. And at the end of it, it's got the PETN REDX. So if you're training properly, they'd be able to look at this, see the red box, follow their alarm resolution feature, feature find the detonator, not the initiator or the blasting cap, and then they'd be able to identify, I've got a potential problem here. You're done at this point. You don't need to find the rest of the crap. You've got a problem. You have something that alarm for an explosive. You have something that looks just like a detonator. You need to uh, go to your alarm resolution procedure, whatever that may be. Now, as you look at the rest of it, we've got the battery, which is a nine volt. There's lots of different nine volts out there, guys. There's not just one type. There's actually four or five different types of nine volts out there, depending on where you are in the world and you need to make sure you're teaching them all of the different types. This one's extremely common in the United States, but they also have ones that have little cells inside of them, and they also have them where it's completely different and sideways. There's a lot of different nine volts out there. This detonator is gonna be a uh, instantaneous bridge wire detonator, and again, you can see the lead azide and the main charge, and again, there's your duplex wiring system. Now with these x-ray systems, now this is a pretty good one as far as the line pairs per millimeter and the resolution, but even on this one, once you start getting into like a 22 to 24 AWG wire, they're not going to be able to get the resolution on those like a, a bomb tech portable x-ray system is. And then when you start going down to these small IED components, some of them we can make out, 
but when they start getting really small, like into the photo cell and also into the uh, micro switch and things of that nature, the system just starts pixelating very badly. So one of the things all of you need to start asking for in your tenders or your solicitations is tell these x-ray vendors, I want better detecting resolution, the uh, detector boards in my system, I want better line pairs per millimeter. Right now, these line pairs per millimeters on these systems absolutely suck. Um, and it can be much better. There are much better detector boards out there that they can use to put in these systems to give you a much clearer, more crisp image, or better what we call line pairs per millimeter. So again, this is PIES. It's a very inaccurate way to try to teach somebody what an IED is. This one is the five components of an IED, and it works much better when you're starting to train somebody on how to do an IED. So here's the example. We always teach them, especially when you go through my class, as soon as you look at a bag, the first color you're looking for is blue. Because if you take a freaking prohibited items list and go from the top to the bottom and write down what color it's going to turn to the x-ray, about 80 to 70% of it's all going to turn freaking blue. So we should be te teaching them to look for blue. Not orange, okay? Orange is a very freaking small window where you actually see the explosives. Orange goes from 0 to 10 zeph. And the, the agornic explosives that they have the algorithm for is like from 6.9 to 7.2, 7.3 in the ZEF range, which is a tiny window. So why in the hell would you tell them to look at all this orange, okay? Prohibited items list, what is the majority of the shit on a prohibited items list turn? It turns fucking blue. So tell your people to start looking for the color blue. And one of the things you want to look for, especially with IEDs, is a battery. Not a power source, a battery, because they understand battery. So right away, I see right here, it looks like two double A's, and I got a nine volt. I got some D cells or C cells or something like this over here. They can recognize that because they already know what that shape is, and it correlates to them as a battery, not a power source. So that's what you want to teach them. So they automatically see this battery or power source. The next part of the process when they see that, when they're clearing all the blue items, is to look at that battery and see if there's any loosey-goosey wires coming off of it or two wires coming off of it it's just not normal. And in both these cases, we see we've got those loose wires coming off of it. So that is why the wire, battery wire, is the next step in teaching somebody the components or the five components of an IED. Because if you're teaching them the process to look at the image and then start taking what you find and then follow it to try to figure out what you have, you're going to follow the wires from the power source to potentially the next item, which would be the switch. IEDs can have multiple switches. So, you know, depending on, on the systems like these, you can't get to the level of a bomb tech. So a lot of times we get into the switch part of it and it gets pretty sophisticated, okay? It's by far the most complex part of an IED. But if you look at something and it's obvious a toggle switch or something like that, or you're teaching them so far that they can identify a digital timer and an image or a mechanical timer, that's pretty good, okay? Um, but most people are not going to be at that level at the very beginning, and that, that switch is going to be the hardest thing. So what we teach them is what we call switchy. you got two wires coming off a power source. They're loosey-goosey. They shouldn't be like that. And it's going to something that looks switchy, electronic in nature, or you know, it's got a metal content to it. And then they would continue to try to follow the wires to see where it goes. The next item it's potentially going to bring them to is the detonator, which goes inside of the explosive. Okay? So the five components of the IED literally follows the process of teaching a person how to identify something in an x-ray and then go from that item and follow it based on the construction of an IED to identify that threat in an x-ray image. It's much more effective than PIES and it makes sense. It follows a logical flow based on the construction of an IED. Now the other thing you're going to have to teach them is what you're looking at right here. This is called component-based and holistic uh, presentations of an IED. And we'll show this to you. So when you look at this display board, I've got two IEDs on this display board. Both of them are using a stick of dynamite. Both of them have a power source. Both of them have a switch. Actually got a couple switches. Uh, both of them have a detonator, which is inserted into the explosive. And as you look at this on the x-ray scene, I'll go ahead and zoom in this for you. Hopefully get it big enough where you can see what it is. Um, when you look at this on the x-ray screen, one is what we call holistic, the other one is called component-based. And what we mean by that is this one right here is what we call holistic. 
And that is typically a more common construction method of how an IED is potentially going to be presented to you in a real world scenario. Um, so typically when an IED is constructed by a terrorist, it's all going to be combined together. You still have all the different components there, but it becomes much more difficult to identify the individual components uh, than it would be if it's broken out like this in what we call component base. Now you can have an IED presented to you in a component based configuration, um, which again, you have to teach both. You have to teach your students not only component based, but also holistic. And the best way to do that is start them, if they're brand new, with component, component based presentations, which has everything laid out for them, so they can do the individual component identification and learn and visually imprint what they look like in an x-ray system. When you start getting better and better at being able to identify all these individual components, they can start progressing to the level where you get into the um, component, the holistic based IEDs. It's a process. You can't shove the fire hose down their throat and expect them to swallow everything they need to know. Learning an IED to an x-ray operator has to be done in steps, okay? You just can't go to some one day or four hour PowerPoint presentation and say, but bam, you got it, bro, out to the x-ray machine. That guy's gonna suck at finding IEDs. Teaching somebody how to find IEDs has to be broken down in steps, and you have to evaluate them as they go through the process to make sure they understand how to look for these things, utilizing a technique which is based on the construction of an IED and something that makes logical sense. You know, I've seen too many presentations where guys just throw a freaking x-ray of something in somebody's bag and say, okay, what do you got? No, you start way before that, you start teaching them the basics, components, and construction of an IED so they can start learning all these individual things and what they look like individually in an x-ray system because they have to find those two. The IED may or may not be completely put together, so being able to identify the individual components is just as important as to being able to identify a completely assembled IED. So I hope this helps. I really hate pies, and that's the reason I'm doing this video. I'm so sick of seeing it. It's so ineffective, and it's actually just crap when you're trying to train somebody on how to find an IED with an x-ray system. So we developed the five components of the IED because it makes sense it's logical, it fits the search procedures and the type of uh, information they're being provided, and it helps you to train them to become much more efficient at finding an IED, okay? I hope this helps. If you have any questions, reach out to us um, uh, at our website, and we'll be glad to help if we can. Thanks, bye.